is called Mycobacterium tuberculosis, and this is an acid-fast aerobic bacterium responsible for causing a disease known as tuberculosis. The reason this bacterium is called acid-fast is because a fatty acid in the cell wall of him in a very similar fashion. As I mentioned, this bacterium causes a condition known as tuberculosis, or TB for short. This is a respiratory disease that may cause everything from a bloody cough to death. The fact that this is a respiratory disease, meaning it is associated with air, should make perfect sense. I mentioned the fact that mycobacterium tuberculosis at the lungs, which obviously help you breathe in air. If a person has an infection of tuberculosis and they cough or sneeze or even talk around you, they may spread this bacterium around. Once you inhale it, it will enter your lungs and in 90% of cases will thankfully not cause an active infection. This means that it will cause a latent TB infection or an infection by mycobacterium tuberculosis that does not cause an individual to fall ill. The reason this occurs goes back to our introductory scenario. If tuberculosis causing bacteria enters your lungs, they will be immediately attacked by cells called white blood cells. These cells are important in something known as your immune system. This is basically the force that protects your body from infection and disease. As soon as these white blood cells, such as macrophages, see these bacteria in your lungs, they will surround these bacteria on all sides. By doing so, your white blood cells will wall off or entomb these bacteria within the immune system's equivalent of a sarcophagus. This sarcophagus is more technically called a granuloma and causes these bacteria to go latent. The nodule that forms in the lungs as a result of a granuloma is called a tubercle and is obviously what gives this disease its name. However, if a person's immune system is compromised, due to something like an HIV infection, then these granulomas will be a serious disease. Likewise, with no granuloma formation, the tuberculosis-causing bacteria will be able to multiply and spread about, causing the active form of tuberculosis to occur. We term this active form more technically and unsurprisingly as TB disease. The disease-causing form of tuberculosis can cause signs or objective, identifiable things such as a bloody cough, fever, scarring of the lungs, and symptoms or subjective experiences that aren't readily measured by objective standards such as fatigue or... Hi guys, welcome to What does this stand for? This is the actual drug used for the skin testing. It stands for purified protein derivative. The purified protein derivative solution is very light sensitive and should be kept out of the light and refrigerated. Gently rotate the vial and mix. Drop the injection just prior to administration. 
Use a single dose tuberculin syringe with a 1 4th to 1 half inch 27 gauge needle. Check the expiration date on the vial and ensure the vial contains tuberculin 5 TU per 0.1 ml. Fill the syringe with 0.1 ml of tuberculin. Cleanse the skin with alcohol or the skin prep recommended by your facility. A lot of times facilities are using chlorhexidine wipes, which is what I'm showing here. With the bevel up, insert the needle slowly just beneath the surface of the skin at a 5 to 15 degree angle. You should see the needle under the skin. Slowly inject the PPD solution to the forearm. A 6 to 10 millimeter wheel should appear. If you don't get a wheel, unfortunately, you're supposed to do the skin test again. Be sure to write your name, the site of injection, the date and the time. Also include the lot number and the expiration date found on the vial to document the injection. Do not cover this with a band-aid. You may see a little bit of blood, but that's normal. Confirm with your patient that they need to come back within two to three days or 48 to 72 hours. If the patient does not return after 72 hours, he'll probably need to have the test done again. Reading the tuberculin skin test. First, inspect the site under good light. Is there any redness, bruising, or blisters, or erythema, which is basically redness? This is the reddening of the skin. Do not measure here. You must palpate the site for induration. Induration means that the skin would be slightly raised. It could be hard, dense, induration, which is a hard, dense, and raised formation. Use your finger as a guide for marking widest edges of the induration across the forearm. This will be what you are measuring and documenting. Mark the area of the induration with a ballpoint pen or felt tip. Usually in most facilities, if it's greater than one centimeter, or obviously 11 or 12 millimeters, then that is considered positive. If no induration, record as zero. Do not record as positive or negative. Only record measurements in millimeters. Symptoms of TB can be fatigue, malaise, weight loss, night sweats, and pulmonary symptoms. Prolonged productive cough and may have bloody sputum. TB could be anywhere in the body, for example, kidney, spine, or bladder. Factors that contribute to TB morbidity. Individuals with HIV, immigration from TB academic countries, deterioration of public healthcare infrastructures. If somebody has a positive tuberculin skin test, measurements should be in millimeters of the induration and notify the healthcare facility. Questions asked prior to the injection. Have you ever had a positive TB test before? Do you have any allergies? Have you traveled outside of the country in the last year? Have you ever had a BCG vaccine before? Note that a BCG is a TB vaccination given in many countries that are epidemic for tuberculosis or could have a job with high TB prevalence. In this test, harmless little pieces of tuberculosis-causing bacteria are injected into the skin. If a small, red swelling appears in the area within three days, it is considered a sign that the person either has a latent TB infection active TB disease or received a vaccine for tuberculosis that caused this reaction. If there is no reaction, that means that none of those things have occurred or the person's immune system is really weak and cannot form a reaction to the test. Other ways by which TB is diagnosed is through blood tests, analyzing sample of coughed up sputum and chest is X-rays. diagnosed with this disease. They are treated with a combination of antibiotics, such as rifampin and isoniazid, for an average of six to nine months. Usually, this process is monitored by healthcare professionals to ensure that people taking these antibiotics actually do so. That's because if they don't take the medication as prescribed, they may cause antibiotic resistance to these drugs to develop, leading to the development of far more dangerous...